Welcome to another production of Park TV 16 Sports. We are broadcasting on YouTube, bringing you girls varsity hockey 2022 opening night here for Benilde St. Margaret's girls hockey team. I am Robert Christensen, glad you're with us. And this is promises to be a great matchup and over Huskies coming in a rising community in the sports world of high school taking on Benilde St. Margaret's. We've got three cameras here tonight. There's our corner camera, one of the most unique angles in all of hockey, right here on Park TV 16 Sports. And Benilde came off a very solid year this year, and there is their goaltender, Demetra Walsma, a junior. And we're about to begin, and we now progress from fall sports to winter sports. And hockey season is underway in St. Louis Park with Benilde controlling the puck behind their own net. That is number 55, Lulu Rosinski for the Red Knights. She is a sophomore. They are in their white and red trim uniforms and over in dark going from right to left. And there is a icing call right off the bat. Just underway here, 17 minutes on the clock here in the first period and they'll bring it all the way back into the Red Knight zone. Really nice to be here broadcasting hockey. One of my favorite sports to broadcast. And a quick face off to the left of Walsma, controlled by Andover. Over to the near side. That's number two with that Ella Thorson, who is a sophomore for Andover. And the Huskies now have control of the puck. Both teams still at full strength. Puck along the near boards, played by number 15. That's Ella Borger, the senior captain for the Huskies. Centering pass right out in front. Two Red Knights right there to thwart that shot attempt. A turn shot and steered away by Walsma. Now Benilde clears the puck and that's gonna be another icing call. Two on the Red Knights so far and that's gonna bring the puck all the way back into their zone. Not a lot to talk about with these two teams, although I look and see Andover has played one game already. On Sunday, they beat Maple Grove three to two. Although I don't know if that was an exhibition or it really counts. I think their records are 0-0, but Andover now on the faceoff. Controlling the puck right in front and a shot and a goal, just like that. Number eight, I believe that was number eight, it was. Nora Sauer just slid that puck right under Walsma. And it kind of went off a Red Knight skate and right into the net. That may have been what they call an own goal, but that's gonna be credited to number eight right there. Here is the replay from the corner camera. Love this angle. And it went right off the Benil stick inadvertently into the net. So the Red Knights, they need to shake that off. I saw a defense person come in and comfort Walsma, and well, it wasn't her fault. But a great start for Andover as they get that first goal in the first minute. And Benil needing to show some offense here. They graduated some important seniors from last year. They're gonna have to find their own identity this year in the year 2022. 23 season, and there's a nice play by number 10 for the Red Knights, showing a little offensive. That's Ella, Ellie Stewart, just a freshman out there. Red Knights are young, and there's some speed by number 15. Sienna Duffy, the junior, she got taken down. That could have been a penalty on Andover, but they let it go. And now the Huskies bring it across. I thought that might have been offsides there briefly. And that whistle didn't get called either. Huskies into the near corner. Wrestling with it there, coming away nicely with it for the Red Knights was number 17. Now behind the boards, Huskies doing a nice job, keeping control, played by number 14, Haley Dunleavy for the Huskies. They still have control, Dunleavy. Now along the near boards to number four, that's Callum Mum. Now picked up by number 15 for the Red Knights, that's Sienna Duffy. And she loses it, and the Huskies have it, and now they'll change on the dump in. And the Red Knights come away with it in their own zone. Lulu Rosinski, centering pass, thwarted by the Huskies, and now they have it. 
A turnover in their own zone. Huskies dominating here, early puck loose in front. Deflected and now it comes out. Huskies still have it. And into the corner as players go down. No whistles so far on that exchange. Now the Huskies at mid-ice take it over. Nice spin move there by number three, Mackenzie Jones. And now the Huskies come right in, shot. Nice save with the pad by Walsma. Puck over to the far boards and it's clear Andover is dominating early on here in the first period. No offsides called there. Now into the corner, that's number 15, Ella Berger to the near side. Great puck rotation by the Huskies, deflected in front by number five, Junkness. And a whistle and a stoppage with 13-11 to go here. First period, we're at the rec center. Here's that replay, the quick shot from the near side and a nice save by Demetra Walsma. And there'll be a face off to her left in the circle, number 14 for the Red Knights. That's Ella Pasqua, sophomore. Young team here by the Red Knights overall. A lot of juniors, or sophomores, and a freshman. And that puck gets cleared, and that's gonna be the third icing call in the first five minutes. So an aw inauspicious start here for the Red Knights as we look at the whole crowd. And a good crowd on hand. And it's a sure sign that winter is here in Minnesota. It was 65 degrees when I woke up this morning and it's about 45 degrees and it's heading south. But the good news is that we've got high school hockey for the next three months or so. Glad you're with us here on Park TV 16 Sports. Now the Red Knights on the far boards at 24, Kaylee Koopman, the junior. And just as she tried to play the puck, there was a whistle. And are we gonna have a penalty? Cross check on number nine, Bailey Gray, the sophomore, is gonna go into the box. So two minutes go on the board, power play opportunity here for the Huskies. They lead one nothing on a very soft goal. And about the first minute, and now a face off the wall, buzz left. Controlled by the Huskies, they're on the power play, the first one of the night for either team. Oh, it's not a power play. Oh, I thought so. Why is it a power play? Oh, it was offsetting. Okay, I see that. I didn't see the other part. My fault. So both teams have full strength. Two players are in the box. Both players are in the box for cross-checking. So they offset. Now the Red Knights in their own zone. Number 55, Lula Rosinski. Trying to clear and get a rush here. The Red Knights still have not had one rush that was clean. Played by number 10, Ellis Stewart, a freshman. And the Huskies will dump and change. And Walsma behind the net. Gives it up to number 16, Eddie Morris. Now to the near board, they try to clear the zone, but kept in nicely by number two, Ella Thorson for the Huskies. Now they keep it in the zone. Played by number 15, she skates it in. That is Ella Berger and a goal. She beats Walsma on the near side. Watch this play by number 15. She comes right in and the quick wrist shot beats her right under that right armpit. That is a sharp shooting goal by that woman right there. Number 15, senior captain, Ella Borger. Look at the corner camera angle. Lightning fast, quick wrist shot. Beautifully done by the left-handed shooter. And now we got a whistle. And is that going to be an icing call on Andover? So this is going to be the first opportunity for the Red Knights to have possession of the puck, hopefully, in the offensive zone. They've been on their heels here early on in the first six minutes. They're down 2-0. Looking to find some offensive traction. Andover controls the puck on the far boards. Red Knights now control at center ice. Huskies now take it over and they leave it alone. They knew there was gonna be an offside whistle, so they let the Red Knights take it over. That's number 20 with it, skates in the middle ice. That's Avalon Mickelson. And 
they lose the puck in the Andover zone. It's picked up by number 25 for the Huskies. That is Courtney Little. Now at neutral ice, picked up by Rusinski. Rusinski now skates it over the line, comes in, quick wrist shot, deflected by the defenseman, number 22, Merrill Delich, the junior for the Huskies. And now the Red Knights shove it back into the Husky zone. That's number 14, Ella Pasqua. Now the Huskies control. Under 11 minutes to play here. 2-0 our score in the first period. Lulu Rosinski now flips it up. Tried to clear the zone and kept in beautifully almost, and then not, by number 28 for the Huskies. That is Hannah Olsen. And now right in front and a save by the goaltender, Courtney Stagman, number one, the senior. That's her first save of the night. She smothers the puck. There's a big smile from her. She gets her first save, and we watch the replay coming in over. Nice pass by number 24, Haley Koopman, and the shot on net. Face off, controlled by the Huskies, and right at center ice, down goes number 11, Maya Engler. I thought that possibly could have been a penalty. They let it go, and it seems to me these officials are gonna let them play tonight, which I oftentimes think that's a better than over-officiating games, unless it's out of control, of course. You gotta have some rules to keep it fair, but otherwise, let them play. Blocked in front on the stick by the Red Knights as they try to turn that into a breakout. Now they lose it again at center ice. So the Red Knights having difficulty getting any kind of rush out of their own zone. Again, this is just game one of a long season. Now the Red Knights back in their own zone, take it over. Skating to the near side, number 16 loses it. Just stolen, pickpocketed if you will, by number 15, Ella Berger, who got that last goal. Now into the far corner. Nine minutes to go here, period number one. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports. We're broadcasting live from the rec center in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, and Andover is dominating so far here. 8.50 to go. Both teams at full strength. That puck just goes through the crease into the corner. Now played by number 25 for the Huskies, Courtney Little. Now played by number 12, Issa Gettel. Centering pass gets deflected in front. Now into the far side, played by number 15 for the Red Knights, Sienna Duffy. She gets it out the center ice, but it's quickly taken away immediately by number 10 for the Huskies, Madison Brown, the senior. Now in the corner, the Red Knights, number nine, plays it, Bailey Gray. I remember her from last year. She's a talented player, and she got Lots of minutes as a freshman, now she's just a sophomore. So a young team here by the Red Knights. I think we're gonna watch them grow well through the season, but right now they're down two nothing here in period number one. Now played by number nine, that's Bailey Gray. Loses the puck though to the Huskies. They are really good at pickpocketing those pucks off the Red Knight sticks. Now trying to clear the zone and interrupted on the four check by the Huskies. And now the Red Knights break out. Two and two and maybe a chance. They're gonna dump and chase it. Comes in behind the net, picked up by number two for the Huskies, Ella Thorson. And now back at center ice, Lulu Rosinski played it momentarily. Puck still loose at center ice. It goes back into the Husky zone and steered away by Courtney Stagman, the goaltender for the Huskies. Now back at center ice. And the Red Knights, number five, Annie Junkness, throws it into the Husky zone. And they'll chase it, try to get possession. And the Huskies come away with it. Unable to clear the ice, it's kept in at the point nicely by the Red Knights. Now centering pass right in front, puck loose. And that was the best chance for the Red Knights tonight. That came with just under seven minutes to go. Now behind the net. Red Knights have a chance. They had three players behind the net, and that is dangerous because if it comes out, they have nobody back to cover. And now the Andover Huskies come in on the near side. Red Knights.
Titans trying to clear it again. That was their best scoring opportunity, I thought, that last rush down. Now they take the puck over in their own zone nicely by number 24, Kaylee Koopman. Now to number 14, Ella Pasqua. There's a whistle away from the play, and that's an offside on the Red Knights that stops the clock. As we look at number 14, Ella Pasqua, and there you can see her teammate, number 24, Koopman, clearly offside. If you look at the Andover bench, that's head coach Melissa Volk. Face off now outside the blue line into the Andover zone. Far corner along the far boards, number nine, Anna Christensen. Plays it all the way into the Red Knight zone. That's gonna be an icing call at 6.02, clock stops. And we'll bring it all the way back into the Andover zone. Two nothing our score, glad you're with us here on Park TV 16 Sports. Opening night here for the Red Knights in their schedule. Got a couple dozen games that'll take them through February 4th. And the playoffs will start after that. Always an exciting time of year here, mid-November in Minnesota. Holidays coming up, hockey's out. Now the Andover Huskies into the Red Knight zone. Number 25 skates in, Courtney Little. Right in front, a shot and a goal by Andover. Bang, bang, play. Just like that, it is 3-0 Huskies. And they look powerful, I gotta say. Loose puck, played by number eight. Sauer, centering pass to number 25, Little. And that is a picture-perfect bang, bang play. Right here. Little actually created it. Then she goes to the center, and number eight, Sauer sees her, and bang, bang. Goal number three. Less than six minutes to go now. Red Knights looking for some traction. Nice centering pass. Nobody home for the Red Knights. And now here come the Huskies on the break, and down. Oh, they're going to call a penalty there, and I do not agree with that call right in front of the official, but I think that was a deception. Let's see what the replay shows. They just kind of got tangled up here. No, there is no intentional action. That is a bogus call. Yeah, and then you can see her body language. She's like, what did I do? Nothing. Yeah, she went down on her own. Nevertheless, power play for Andover. They're already up 3-0. Five minutes remaining here in period number one, and now they're on the power play to add insult to injury. That was a very questionable penalty call, in my opinion. Centering pass, puck loose. Look out here, Andover. They look like a very good team. I haven't seen any rankings right in front of a nice save by Walsma, and she stopped. Cole, number 15 with that shot, Ella Berger. And a nice save there by Walsma. Here is the centering pass right there, and a point blank shot. And a save by Walsma. Face off to her left with 4.40 to go here, period number one. Fast moving first period, very few whistles. Save for those uh, icing calls. Now Andover on the power play. 119 to go in the man advantage or the woman advantage. Quick shot and another great save by Walls. On another one on the rebound. Great job by the junior. It's her first year starting, but she is facing a tough offensive juggernaut here in Andover. And they are in control here. Four minutes remaining in the period. 53 seconds remaining in the player advantage. On the near boards, played by number 12 for the Huskies, Issa Gettel. And the slap shot right in front, rebound, and the wrist shot goes wide right along the boards. Tried to kept in, and now the Red Knights do get it out the center ice, and they will change on that. Andover trying to get back on the offensive zone, 30 seconds to go in the player advantage. Nice pass off the boards, near side, creates a great opportunity there for number 10, Madison Brown. That shot goes behind the net, deflected. Now along the near boards, played out, kept in just barely by number 25, Little. 
Little now centering pass and another goal. As that got deflected in, she just put it into the chaos in front of the net. And it went in the net. Let's see if it was random or there was an intentional shot here. It's now Little. Center, oh, what a nice tip in by number eight. Nora Sauer, that was brilliant. That was not an accident. Watch Little here, just dominating. Put it right on Sauer's stick and she, there she is. That was pure skill. She gets a little tap on the shoulder and a smile. Watch this, folks, right there. That was pure intentional stuff. She knew exactly what she was doing. And now a penalty. While I was describing that replay, there is number 28 for the Huskies, Hannah Olsen, the sophomore. She's in the cooler for two minutes, and we'll find out what that was for. And now the Red Knights, they are not used to being down 4 nothing in their building ever that I can remember since doing broadcast for the last few years here or so. So they're a young team. I expect them to get better. And I think Andover, I thought, wouldn't be surprised if they're ranked in the top 10. All right, now Gray behind the net. Now, if you're the Red Knights, it's like, let's just get a goal. Let's play a different game here. Not worry about winning as much as just getting better. And let's get a goal on these Huskies and go from there. But the Huskies look impressive here on opening night for sure. They do have a game under their belt, which gives them an advantage. They just had a game on Sunday. I can't believe they're playing high school games on Sundays, but they guess they are these days. November 6th, they beat Maple Grove, which might be a really good team too. They're a huge suburb to the west, northwest of St. Louis Park. And now the Huskies control it, and they will change on the dump into the corner, picked up by the Red Knights in the corner. Number 15 with it, that is Sienna Duffy. Cross rink pass to the near boards, played by number 24, Kaylee Koopman. Now the Huskies take over, clear the zone. Rosinski stops it at center ice, tries to get it ahead. Back into the Husky zone, taken away by number two, Ella Thorson. Under two minutes to play here, period number one. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports. Now number 97, Kendall Hassler. She's a dangerous skater and scorer as well for the Red Knights. And right in front, oh, centering pass. Might have wanted to take the shot there now in front. That puck just skates through the crease. And another shot right on net by Rosinski. And that gets deflected and saved by the goaltender. The puck comes all the way down, and they wave off icing. Rosinski will skate it out. 1.15 to go. Now a turnover almost, still controlled by the Red Knights. Now number 24 fans on, and a chance for Andover. Oh, and now saved by number 20, Avalon Mickelson, as they get it out to neutral ice. Picked up by Andover. One minute to play in period number one. Now skating in on the left side. That is Hannah Olsen, who just came out of the penalty box. Both teams at full strength. Now behind the net, number 27. That is Sienna Carver. Carver now to the far boards. All on the boards, in the center ice. And gets it up to number six, Brendickson. Beautiful pass, perfectly timed. And she gets skated off along the far boards. That is number six, Grace. Bendixson, a freshman. Really young team here for the Red Knights. It's gonna be fun to watch them grow throughout the season. 23 seconds to go now. And taken away at neutral ice by number 15, Duffy. Quick shot, rebound, and an excellent opportunity, and just goes by the wayside. So the Red Knights starting to wake up here on offense. It's only period number one of game one of the whole season. And behind the net, Along the far boards up to neutralize, and there is the buzzer signifying the end of period number one. And after one full period of play from the rec center, our score, four nothing Andover. Come on back for period number two on Park TV 16 Sports. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time.
kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports on Location. We are bringing you girls varsity hockey and over taking on Benilde St. Margaret's. We're about to begin period number two of opening night at home for the Red Knights. And if you're just joining us, it was a rough first period for the very young Red Knights. They gave up four goals to a very good Andover team and we're underway here from the rec center in period number two. Let's see if the Red Knights, they showed some signs of some offensive ability here late in period number one. Let's see if they can carry that through into period number two. But again, they're a young team. It's gonna be fun to watch them grow. They're down four nothing here. Let's see what period number two brings us here in their opening home game of the season. And Andover in dark from left to right. Now picked up by number 97, Kendall Hassler. She's a talented player. She'll dump it in the corner and change on the fly. Now Andover in their own zone. Played by number four, Kaylin Mum. Now picked up by Mum. She skates it in over the blue line, being harassed from behind by number 14, Ella Pasqua for the Red Knights. Now a slap shot. Big shot, loud sound off the backboards. Taken by number 15, Ella Berger, the senior captain. She's got a goal tonight, and that's a big time slap shot by the left-hander. And now there's a triple on the far boards right in front of the official. Committed by number 27, Sienna Carver. It's gonna get the penalty box as we watch that poke check. And there is, boy, I'm not sure. What are you gonna call that? I thought that was a hip check. Maybe that's what the call will be. I don't think checking is allowed in girls varsity hockey. It didn't really feel like it was a trip although she went down. Let's listen to the official announcement here in a minute, but Andover with a four goal lead now on the power play again, early in the second period. Body checking was the penalty, so I was right. It wasn't a trip, it was the check. That's why I was a little like, confused because when you watch a lot of men's hockey, uh, that stuff is allowed. So it didn't look illegal, but in girls hockey it is. You wonder about that rule. Why not let them check? Not quite sure what the rationale is or the reasoning is for that rule, but it exists. And Andover is on the penalty power play as a result. And ooh, into the Nords, and that looked a little dangerous, but she's all right. Now the slap shot on the one-timer Goes wide right, Walsma able to steer that clear. Now the Red Knights on the penalty kill, break it out. Nicely done by the Red Knights. And now down goes another Red Knight, Andover on the fly, skating in. Unchecked, Mackenzie Jones comes right in from the left side, puck to the right side. And the Red Knights do clear it out to center ice and a chance here for number 10. Ellie Stewart showing some speed, but no one there to help her. She still controls the puck, and now she'll go down. No call on that. That is curious. Stewart just getting beat up, goes down again. No penalty, they wave it off again. Andover clearly getting the benefit of the calls here on the road at the rec center. Now Andover still in the power play. 10 seconds remaining in the player advantage. Nice job by the Red Knights with the penalty kill, taking up time, mostly by the efforts of Ellie Stewart for the Red Knights. Well, both teams at full strength. Quick shot right in front and a great quick save by Walsma, showing quick reflexes and nicely done. If we look at Stewart, she dominated killing that. She went down there, no call. Boy, not sure about that. Red Knights have yet to be on the power play. 13.44 to go, second period. Face off to Walsma right, controlled by the Red Knights behind the net, they skirted around. 
And it's gonna come all the way down, and that's gonna be another icing call on the Red Knights. They are trying to figure it out here. Clock stop with 13.37 remaining. Face off now as they quickly line up to the left of Walsma. Face off, controlled by the Red Knights. That's their second playoff a face off win on the draws. They've done well. Now into the zone, and I thought I heard a whistle, but they play on. Red Knights now controlling the puck. They need to start to try to show that they can control the puck in the offensive zone for a sustained period of time. They've yet to do that, but they are getting closer to it. Down 4 nothing. 13 minutes left to go here. Period number two, no score in, in the second period. Red Knights trying to clear the puck. Both teams at full strength. Comes away, played by number nine, Bailey Gray, now in front, and steered nicely on defense by Addie Morris, the sophomore. Now in the corner, behind the net, centering pass in front, Little gets a shot on net, Walza makes the save. She is doing really well here since the early goings of period number one. Showing really quick with the pad. She can get down to the ice very fast and make quick reflex saves. Again, this is just match one of 22 all year for the Red Knights before the playoffs. And that puck sails over the, into the boards behind the net and it's played back in. Red Knights control with number 20 with the puck, Avalyn Mickelson. She loses it at center ice and overtakes over. They get it in, it's on sides. Red Knights now have it on the near side. Backhand pass out of the zone. Tried to get it ahead to number four, Morris. Or Harris, I should say. Now into the corner. Walsma stops behind the net. She is looking more and more comfortable in nets. At least that's what it feels like from my vantage point here. Now Andover, nifty play by number 15. And that's going to be goal number five for Andover. And I am understating how great a goal and move that was by number 15, Ella Berger. Watch this move, folks. She skates around three Red Knight players and beats Walls on the near side over the rough shoulder. Big time talent there by that woman right there, number 15. I mean, that was just beautiful, beautiful goal. Unassisted, 5-0 Andover. And they are putting on a clinic here. Nice shot there by Stewart. There was some smoke on that one. You can hear it all the way up here in the Raptors of the rec center. Now, right in front of Walsma. Down goes the Andover player, number 10, Madison Brown, the captain, as they're looking for more. Centering pass behind, number 12, Issa Gettel for Andover. Centering pass, the return pass, right in front, nobody home, and Andover is just dominating. Now on the near boards, Fendixson loses it, Fendixson her name, freshman, and a shot. Gosh, my goodness, that power on that wrist shot by number 15, Ella Berger. She's got two goals on the night, and with a wrist shot like that, there could be more. As we approach 10 minutes remaining in period number two, and now a wide open, a quick wrist shot by number 12 for Andover, Issa Gettle. That puck sails wide right at neutral ice, back into the Red Knight zone. 10 minutes now remaining. They try to clear the puck. Kept in by Andover in the corner. Red Knights trying to get it out. Puck mired along the boards in the corner now. Red Knights, and they got a breaker, and they couldn't quite get through, and they do now to number 24. Kylie Koopman brings it right in on the doorstep. Nice individual effort by Koopman. Now in the corner. 
Played by Koopman as she comes off, showing great perseverance, number 24, Koopman. Now the Red Knights trying to show some sort of sustained offensive pressure. It gets back out to center ice. There's our corner camera. And number 16 does a nice job for the Red Knights. Addie Morris, she gets it into the Andover zone. Red Knights trying to answer back here with some sort of offense. Now the puck mired along the near boards. Picked up by number five, Junkness. She comes right in and unable to convert. And that might have been their best scoring opportunity of the night. Nice job by the Red Knights getting to that puck first, turning it right back around for an offensive chance. Beautiful transition. And the Red Knights are starting to get some energy on offense, starting to feel the timing and get their chemistry down. I thought that was a nice rush there. They had three back, and now they're just starting to get their stride, it feels like. Now dumped in by number 15, Sienna Duffy. Behind the net, played by the Huskies, Mackenzie Jones. Now back at the center ice. And the Red Knights look a lot better here in the second period than they did in the first. They try to knock that rust off from a spring, summer, and fall, and now it's winter time in Minnesota. Quick wrist shot by Stewart. And if there's one advantage the Red Knights have, they're not the biggest team in the world, but they are fast, and that's how they're gonna have to get their advantage, is with their speed. At least that's what it feels like here early on. Stewart, they are highly skilled, these Red Knights, and these young players are gonna do well. It's just gonna take a while for them to play together and figure it out. Ooh, down goes number six, awkwardly, Grace Ben Dixon. She'll skate off. Looks like she might be okay. I thought it might be a knee issue. She sits down. Now right in front for the Huskies, and a shot and a goal by number 14, Haley Dunleavy. That was a sharp shooting shot. Watch this by the powerful Dunleavy. Threads the needle in that upper left hand corner and that is a gorgeous looking goal and a shot. By 24, 14, Hallie Dunleavy. Look at the corner camera, beautiful angle. Great images from our videographers. Beautifully done. Six nothing Andover. That's not so beautiful if you're a Red Knight fan though. We look at it again. Look at that. That is big time hockey right there on display by number 14, Hallie Dunleavy. I see a few or a couple Division I prospects on this Andover team. They are fast, they are big, they are strong and talented. along the near boards. Gray trying to keep it in, unable to do so. Now back up to neutralize, taken over by the Huskies, number 17, Avery Brown. You may, we may be looking at the state champion here in Andover. They could be that good, we'll see. A little early to make such prognostications, but when the score is six nothing, you start to wonder about what the future holds. And this Andover team looks really good as we look at goaltender number one, Courtney Stagman. And they do have seniority. They started four, five seniors and a junior as opposed to the Red Knights who had half their starting lineup was freshmen and sophomores. And that's really all you need to know is to explain the score is six nothing. Red Knights graduated a lot of accomplished seniors last year. And they had a great team. Now, Andover. And the Red Knights take it over. Number 27, Sienna Carver comes in. Gets around the defense little. Still fighting for it in the corner. Carver now loose. Chasing it is Lulu Rosinski. And that shot from the near boards tried to take Stegman by surprise, but she was ready for it. The goaltender for Andover. Now under six minutes to go, period number two. Rosinski along the far boards. She gets pickpocketed by number 12, Issa Gettle. Now the puck back into the red night zone. Under six minutes to go here, period number two on Park TV 16 Sports. A spin move, centering pass 
deflected in front. Great defense by number 27 for the Red Knights, Sienna Carver. Now the Huskies play it back into the Red Knight zone. Five and a half minutes remaining. Period number two, and now there's going to be a penalty on Andover. For the first time tonight of the season, the Red Knights are going to go on the power play. And here is the replay. I don't know, that's a body check, I guess, would be the penalty, wouldn't it? Crowd. Not a bad place to be on a cold, blustery, early winter night in St. Louis Park. And the Red Knights, their first power play of the night. Let's see if this can result in a goal. Their first one of the season. And the two. Now the Red Knights, I think there was a penalty on Andover, but they offset. As the Huskies score, so oh, and now right away the Andover Huskies take it over on the penalty kill. Look out, Red Knights. Oh, and down goes the Andover player. But that was an inadvertent trip. No intention there. Oh, look at that pickpocket by number 15 in the reverse pass behind the back pass by Ella Berger. There is some big time talent on this Andover team, and they are really starting to show it, especially in the open ice. They are one player down and they are dominating here. Now the Red Knights take over. Let's see if they can get numbers. They don't have them. That was number nine with the interception. Bailey Gray now into the corner, taken back over by the Huskies, number four, Kalen Mum. And they'll send it all the way down. Just under a minute to go in the player advantage for the Red Knights. They have yet to get a shot on goal on this power play as the Huskies have dominated. Now picked up by number eight, Nora Sauer. She's got a goal on the night. They're up a half dozen here as we approach the waning minutes of period number two. Now number 24 skates it in, Kaylee Koopman. 29 seconds remaining, the player advantage. And Red Knights just having a hard, there's Rusinski, keeps it in. And now a chance to the near side. Carver with a good move. Oh, I would have done a backhanded shot at the net. But there was a scrum in front, it would have been hard, and that goes off the post by number 17 for the Red Knights. Nell Tightshide, another sophomore. Wow, there was some pace on that shot. So frustrating for the Red Knights as you can hear the ting off the pipe all the way up here in the back row of the arena. Three minutes now remaining, both teams at full strength. Now to the near side, number 27, Carver with another shot. As the Huskies finally clear the puck, and that was the best sustained pressure on offense by the Red Knights all night. Now the Huskies answer back. In the corner now, and they clear the puck, and that's gonna be an icing on the Red Knights. And that brings a whistle, and the clock stops with 2.39 to go here, period number two. And watch this play right off that near post. Almost got the first goal. Here's the corner camera. Right here, bang. Wow. That is the greatest image ever from that corner angle. We could see it clearly off that pipe. Beautifully done. Nowhere else but Park TV 16 Sports has that corner camera exactly like that. Brings unique images and insights into the game of hockey. Love it. All right, now Red Knights trying to clear the puck. 2.11 to go here, period number two. Huskies intercepted in the zone, right in front on the doorstep and the quick shot taken by number 24, Avery Kasich, and another save for Walsma, who's really played very well here, all things considered. Right there, look at her looking right down at the puck, staying very poised. Well done by number 39. She has, the thing that I notice about Walsma is just your really, really cat-like quick reflexes.
Shot from the high part of the circle, goes wide right. Still controlled though in the Red Knights zone. Six nothing centering pass, intercepted by 24 for the Red Knights, Koopman. She skates it out to center ice, but taken right back by number 10, Madison Brown. Right in on Wozma, and she makes the save. And that is now the emerging story for the Red Knights. And the silver lining here is the play of their goaltender, Walsma, right here. Look at that. Her talent is now starting to become evident why she is the goalie. Well done. Really well done. All right, now face off to her left. Controlled by Andover. They are definitely a machine out there. Coming out of the North Suburban Com Northwest Suburban Conference. Where I think they're gonna dominate coming right in. And nice defensive play going down on the ice with Lulu Rosinski. These Red Knights showing lots of heart here. Now Rosinski behind her own goal, picks up the puck. One minute to go in period number two. She tries to get out to center ice. Puck was played above the shoulder, so that almost threw a whistle, but they let it go. Now puck at center ice, Andover, 48 seconds remaining. You know, if there is improvement, and I'm always looking for the silver lining, the Red Knights gave up four goals in period number one, and they improved that by 50%. They only gave up two here in period number two. Now Hassler comes in, and look at that brilliant pass right in front. The Husky takes down the Red Knight on that far side. But what about the vision of Hassler right over there to find her in the slot? She just couldn't get enough on it to make it a meaningful shot. But what great action on offense by the Red Knights. And they're starting to emerge here. 27 seconds to go. Far corner, junkness number five. Taken away though by number three, Mackenzie Jones for Andover. Now it's center ice, here come the Huskies with 15 seconds to go. They're gonna try to get their seventh goal. Hannah Christensen now behind the net. Centering pass, gets through the defense, and they recover well into the corner. Five seconds to go. Quick wrist shot high above. Walsbach kicks it in the corner, and that's the buzzer, and that is the end of period number two from the rec center. Our score after two complete. 6 nothing. come on back for period number three. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfie. Ah! Selfie nailed it. Yeah warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Welcome back to the Rec Center and Park TV 16 sports production of Girls Varsity Hockey, Benil St. Margaret's opening night at the Rec Center, taking on Andover, and there is your score, 6-0, and it has been all Andover. But there is a silver lining for these Red Knights. They're a year of transition here. They've got a lot of young players, and they have even shown improvement from the opening face-off. And we're about to get period number three. The goal here for the Red Knights is to get on the board here in game number one. Let's see how they do. They're going from left to right. Glad you're with us. I'm Robert Christensen. We're streaming live on YouTube. And you, again, are watching Park TV 16 Sports on location. Opening night for the Red Knights at home. And they control the puck on their own end. Now along the far boards, played by Hassler. Number 97. And behind the Andover net. Huskies take over at center ice. They skated across the line. Number 14 is Haley Dunley. Now Rosinski for the Red Knights, gears it away, but kept in at the point, now gets by. And the Huskies will have to retreat into their own zone. Now played by number two, Ella Thorson. 
As they cleared into the Red Knight zone, and the Andover Huskies will change on that exchange. Now here come the Red Knights. Number nine with it, Bailey Gray, and she is a nifty, quick player. Skates it into the near corner. Taken away right away by the Huskies, and they are really having their way, and they do have the advantage when it comes to size and strength, and they're just able to manhandle that puck away right now from the Red Knights. Now Gray with it, smartly takes it behind the net rather than skate it in front as she gets corralled along the boards and the puck is taken away. And Andover just pulling their way into that puck all night long as they did just right there. Now skating out with it, number four, 24, is that Pasqua? Pasqua, 14. Gets skated off the puck, now loose along the far boards, picked up by Andover. And they dump it in the corner and they'll chase it. Getting there first is the Red Knights Hassler. Or no, that's number 16 instead, Addie Morris. And now it'll come all the way down into the Andover zone. They get it, no icing on the call. Now puck loose in front. Stewart has it in a chance and a quick wrist shot. And that goes off the post. The second post by the Red Knights tonight. And that was a great opportunistic play by number 10. Ellie Stewart. She and Gray are going to be a dynamic duo going forward. They're similar in size and stature and game. They're both lightning fast and very talented. And they're going to have to use their speed to their advantage going forward in the season. Now Rosinski in the far corner dumps it out to neutral ice. And they're going to call icing unless they can get there first. And they do call icing. Chasing it was number six, Grace Ben Dixon, but not able to get there in time. And here is that shot by Stewart. My goodness, how quick is that young skater? My goodness. They're the fastest girls hockey players I've ever seen. My goodness. Face off to Walsma's left. She gets that behind the net. Picked up by Gray, number nine for the Red Knights. Now along the far boards. Played by number 15, Santa Duffy. Also there for Andover is Hailey Dunleavy. And she had an outstanding goal in period number two. Bendixson plays it off her skate. Now the Red Knights set neutral ice. Poke checked ahead nicely by Gray. Now she gets it. She hits dead on into number 28. Hannah Olsen, and she goes down quickly. And now the Red Knights in their own zone. Centering pass just missed Gray, and it's going to go all the way down, and they're going to wave off icing with 13-11 to go here, period number three. Now Andover in their own zone. Big pass, and that's going to be icing on the Huskies, and that didn't take long at all. That stops the clock with 13 minutes to go. Oh, they are running time here. And there was Gray, ran into a brick wall in Haley Olsen, 28. You don't think these kids are tough? They are very tough. Now in the corner, Andover controls the faceoff, centering pass, and Rosinski interrupts that. Nice play, perfectly timed by number 55, but Andover perseveres, and the puck still ends up in the hands, or the stick of number 15, Ella Berger. Now here come the Red Knights on defense. Number five, Junkness, fans on it, now dumps it in. And it's gonna be offsides unless Ed is offsides. Just a little hiccup there on the pass. Allowed the Red Knights skater to get in ahead of the puck and that was the offsides whistle. Clock's still running with 12.05 to go. Good crowd on hand here for opening night. And this Red Knight team gives you something to be excited about. They really have some exciting players, and I really expect them to improve greatly as the season goes on. As they start to create the type of team they're going to be here, and I think quickness is where it's going to have to be for them, is use their speed. And that behind the net. Now played along the near boards, Junkness, nice job. They are looking so much better here in period number three than they looked in period number one. And that's what you want to see, you want to see improvement. And that speaks well of the season going for the Red Knights, but there was a whistle, icing call, brings the puck all the way back. Face off to Walsma's right. 
After that first initial period, Walls must really settled in here as the starting goaltender. I think it's her first start of her career, if I'm not mistaken. And even though they've given up that number of goals, they have kept their heads up and continued to press forward. Now and over at center ice, they get it in. No offsides, played by number 20. Avalyn Mickelson and a quick near shot saved by Walsma. And as she really played well here after period number one. It wasn't like she was playing that poorly in period number one. The team was just giving up easy goals and it was hard for her to make the saves, but she has come up with some great save sense and has only given up two since then. Now and over in front, Haley Dunleavy to save and another great save. Walsma kept her head up and got the rebound there and she is really starting to show how talented she is in nets. Great goaltending there. 10 minutes to go here, period number three. Andover now coming right in and they're just taking huge shots and another save by Walsma. And now there's some frustration and good for this team, Bailey Gray mixing it up. Not the tallest players out there. They're gonna have to fight back like that as the season goes on, I feel. Clearly Andover, you don't have to be a rocket science by your visual cues to see how big they are. Now they're pushing back and that's what they're gonna have to do. Yeah, look at the drawing and you can see the size difference, but I like that. You gotta stand up for yourself and that's what the Red Knights are doing. Face off in their own zone, clock on running time. 9.15 to go here. Face off behind, controlled by the Red Knights. Number 27, Sienna Carver gets it out to neutral ice. Stalled along the boards there, nine minutes remaining. Oh, there was a penalty there, I didn't notice. Actually, offsetting calls. I don't know why I'm not perceiving them. It's hard for me to hear in this arena tonight for some reason. Puck now. So both teams still at full strength. Offsetting calls and now a whistle. And we're going to get a penalty. And I think it's going to go against the Red Knights. Rosinski. Yeah. Questioning the official. Asking him. Explain that. Clearly, she respectfully disagrees. Clock continues to run as we're on running time. So that penalty comes with approximately eight and a half minutes to go. You can see the clock in the upper left hand corner. 8.08, 8.07 to go. Face off now to Demetra Walsma's right. And over. Another save by Walsma. And over. They look like a well-oiled machine, those girls do for the Huskies of Andover. Centering pass right in front, keeping her feet in. Another great defensive play by Benil, and they clear the puck. Pretty play by number five, Junkness. Well done. Or that was number six, excuse me, Ben Dixon. You know, with their ponytails and so forth, and the folds of the jerseys, I can't always see their numbers. So if I get them wrong momentarily, I'll always correct it. My apologies. Hopefully no one is offended. Now into the Red Knight zone. Huskies on the power play. A nifty move and a shot over the crossbar bar. Number 10, Madison Brown was right on the doorstep. Red Knights dodge a bullet there as we approach seven minutes to go. Back out at neutral ice. One minute remaining in the player advantage. Now in the zone, number 10. Brown at the top of the circle is number 15, Berger. Four Huskies, 45 seconds and another. Is that a save? Oh, it got by Walsma. Yeah, she is frozen there. She can't believe it. Let's see what happened here. What is the autopsy on this goal? Oh, it just got tipped in front. What are you going to do? Number 10, Madison Brown with the Brilliant tip. And that's more the defense's fault than the goaltender. Right here, she's wide open. And the defenseman, number 44, was late getting over Brooklyn Riley. 
and she needed to be on that body to prevent that tip in. I'm sure they'll clean that up in a nice pad save and a shot on goal by the Red Knights. That was Ellie Stewart. She's really emerging as one of the two or three offensive threats here for the Red Knights. And look at Bailey Gray, the other one. Number nine, Gray, and number 10, Stewart. They are looking like the heart and soul of this team as she comes in, gets it poke checked away. 5.43 to go. Here comes Andover. Both teams at even strength. That's number 25, Little with it. Courtney, still with it. Now number 14 plays it. Dunleavy. Seven goals for the Andover Huskies. They are a senior-laden team going against a team that's mostly sophomores and freshmen. And that is the reason for the score here, ultimately. But I like this Red Knights team. I'm looking forward to doing more games in the future as we watch this young team start to grow up right in front of our eyes. And they have some exciting players coming up here. Now, Brzezinski is one of them. Nice pass by her. Now it's center ice. Well done. As she controls the body and the puck right in around and across the line. Now behind the net by the Red Knights. And they are still hung up over there in the corner. You can see them right in front of the ref, and they let them play on. Now the Red Knights control it. Looking for that first goal of the year. Now Hassler behind the net, number 97. Centers out to Rosinski at the point. Just got there enough. Now back. Oh, and she was wide open, that pass intended for number 39. Now in front, centering pass, and she fanned on it. Number 20 was wide open, Nicholson, and now comes all the way back into the Red Knight zone. Under four minutes to go, period number three. Lulu Rosinski with it. She eludes the defender, comes across center ice, brings it into the zone, and loses it just as she crossed the blue line. Now to the near side, Huskies. That is number 15. Berger. Now the Huskies, number 22 with it at the point. Her shot, Delich right in front. Walsma kicks it loose. Rebound, and now gets cleared into the Red Knight zone, and that brings a whistle. But the clock will continue to run. 3.23 to go, period number three. And look at the one-timer from a short angle. Number 15, Berger. Walsma kicked it out nicely. Don't let those seven goals fool you. This Walsma is a good goaltender. She's playing very well, really settled down after the period number one. And those goals aren't completely her fault, not in the least. It's a team game. Now Juckness comes in late. Face off to Walsma's left. Controlled by the Huskies, quick shot on net. And a great pad save by Walsma. You can see how quick she is with her reflexes. Very noticeable to me how quick she is with her reflexes. Now behind the net, that's going to be a penalty on the Huskies. Draws a whistle, number 11 is going to go for tripping or hooking Maya Engler. Right there, takes down the Red Knight, no doubt about it. And the clock will continue to run. Two minute power play for the Red Knights to finish this one off. 2.19 to go in regulation. And a face off in the zone, so a chance for the Red Knights to avoid the shutout at home on opening night. Boy, a goal here would be so much for their confidence, wouldn't it? Now 24 on the near side. Koopman, and that save comes all the way out to neutralize. 153 remaining. Koopman tips it in the zone. They wave off the offsides and they'll chase it. Juckness now chasing it for the Red Knights. Now it gets played back out to neutral ice. And chasing it is Gray, followed by another number nine. That is Hannah Christensen. And Gray brings it out to center ice, loses control, and it gets sent right back into the Red Knights zone. Just as Rosinski comes off the bench and hits her in the skates, and now she'll play it ahead to Juckness. 126 to go. Juckness gives it up. And Andover tried to clear the puck, but it was knocked down. And now they have it at neutral ice, and now they'll clear it in the Red Knight zone. 
That was number 28 for the Huskies, Hannah Olsen. 111 to go here, period number three. Behind the net, number 24, Koopman gets around the defense. One minute remaining. Actually, that was number 22, Abby Garvin. With the long ponytail there. I couldn't quite get the number, but nice job by her clearing that puck. Now Rosinski to Hassler, or no, excuse me, Carver. Oh, nice nifty behind the back pass, back to Rosinski, skates over the line. 38 seconds to go, quick shot goes wide right, hard along the backboards, Rich Shades all the way back out to neutral ice, and now the Red Knights off to pick it up, and this will be their last rush of the night. Here comes number 97, Kendall Hassler, trying to get a goal tonight here before it's over. Tried to skate through the two defensemen, unable to get it, poke checked off her stick. 18 seconds remaining, back out to neutral ice. And that is probably gonna do it here as Bailey Gray catches up with it with nine seconds to go. Now intercepted, put right back in, another save by Walsma. And the Red Knights will clear it out. One second and there is the buzzer, signifying the end of this one. And our final score from the rec center, 7-0 Red Knights take it on the chin, opening night. They're a young team, a lot to look forward to. Andover wins it. So for Paul Broden, our producer, everyone connected with our production here at Park TV 16 Sports, my name is Robert Christensen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again.